Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and I want to thank you and the ranking member for collaborating on this, uh, this hearing and, and, and approaching it in the right way, I think. Uh, first of all, I, I want to thank the witnesses for, for your testimony. I think it's very helpful. Um, as I understand it, and I'm not sure, I'm, I'm a little skeptical, they tell me that the facial recognition that you use on your phone with the iPhone, uh, that, that at least the way iPhone says they handle this is that the, the indicia of, of identity uh, stays on the phone and doesn't, doesn't go up to a server at this point. But, uh, you know, I, I sort of question whether they'll have that ability to do that in the future. Um, I, I think there's probably a greater, uh, greater danger that, that they will get facial recognition right. You know, it's not the misses that I'm concerned about right now, although that has to stop. Uh, it's, it's what happens when uh, they have all this data out there, uh, whether it's law enforcement or, or private firms. Uh, we had a massive data breach by Suprema, which is a, a big bio, uh, uh, biometrics collector, 100 million people, I think. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, 20, 27 million people in that uh, breach. And then Customs and Border Patrol, uh, 100,000 people that they identified along with license plates, that, that was breached. So uh, the concern is once, once this information is collected, it is not secure. And, and, and that's a major problem uh, for all of us. Uh, I, I want to ask some specific questions about TikTok. So TikTok is a Chinese company. Uh, well, it was purchased by a Chinese company. Uh, it's a musical video app that, that the kids love. I think they tell me that in the last 90 days, uh, a billion people have downloaded it uh, in U.S. and in, in Europe. And uh, it's owned by the Chinese government. And uh, under China, it, it, I'm sorry, it's, it's located in Beijing. And under, under Chinese law, the recent uh, national security law in China, they have to cooperate. They have to cooperate with the Chinese government. And we already see it happening. If you look on TikTok, you don't see much about the protests in, in Hong Kong. They're, they're already exercising censorship on TikTok. So uh, they, TikTok would have to cooperate with China. So that's a national security concern for us. CFIUS is looking at it. It's under review. The other situation is Apple phone. The iPhone and our efforts because of the Pensacola shootings, we're trying to get Apple to open up the iPhone so we can get that information. If you step back, it's sort of what we're worried about China doing, what we're doing with, with Apple. We're trying to get access to that data, just like China can get all that data uh, from TikTok. How do we resolve that, that dilemma? Is there a way, Mr. Ro Dr. Romine, that what we, can, we can protect our citizens and, uh, and others who uh, share that data or, or have their data, their identity captured, you know, their uh, facial recognition captured? How do we resolve that? so that uh, we use it to the benefit of society. I think the bottom line, thank you for the question, I think the bottom line really is balancing the understanding of the risks associated with uh, policy decisions that are made. Those policy decisions are outside of NIST's purview, but uh, with regard to the debate on, uh, you know, access to, to Apple and encryption, uh, we know that in the, in the government and, and broadly speaking, there are two... Okay, if it's not arguments. in your discipline, let me ask Ms. Whitaker. Same question. Thank you for the question. I think the, the short answer there is that we don't have the answer to that question. We have not done the research that is needed to affirmatively answer that, yes, we can protect people's privacy, their liberty, when these technologies are deployed at wide scale in a complex geopolitical context. I think we need more of that research, and we need clear regulations that ensure that these are safe. All right. Mr. Castro, anything to add? Yeah, I just say, I mean, I think we need to unabashedly support encryption. I think when, you know, you have end-to-end -end encryption, consumers have control over the data, and then the third parties don't. If we back that, that's the way you give consumers control of the information. That's how you keep it out of the hand of government on either side.
right. um, I exhausted my time. Uh, Madam Chair, thank you for your courtesy. Thank I you so back. much.